welcome to Mental Health First Aid. My name is Denise Ellsbury, and today as our guest, we have Faye Jackson. Faye uh, is the supervisor at our newly opened Hinsdale office for Linden Oaks Behavioral Health, and she's also a social worker and a mental health first aid instructor. So we're happy to have her to here today to tell us about the new Hinsdale office, and we'll, we'll just chat about a whole bunch of different things. So welcome, Faye. I'm glad Hi, you're Denise. here. Thank you. So tell us maybe real quickly about <clears throat> the new Hinsdale office. Well, um, we moved um, mid-July. We opened uh, July 18th. Uh, we have a beautiful new building, mm -hmm. fabulous offices. We're very excited and happy to be there. Um, it gives us a larger space to accommodate more patients in a timely manner. Mm -hmm. It allows us uh, to uh, grow the program. So we're all very excited. The patients love the nice, bright, sunny rooms. Mm -hmm. I, we, you were kind enough to give us a tour a week or so ago, and it is a lovely space. So it's beautiful. Prior to that, now um, you'd kind of been the Elmhurst office for uh, Linden Oaks, but um, you were in kind of the doctor's building next to the hospital, and yes. So now <clears throat> this is a newly constructed building. Um, in Hinsdale, correct? Brand new building, yes. Nice, yes. nice, nice. So um, it, what kind of services do you offer there at that office for Linden Oaks? Well, we have an array of services. <coughs> um, we have psychiatry and meds management. Mm -hmm. We have um, added two additional psychiatrists, so now we have four. Mm -hmm. We also have two advanced practice nurses who are licensed to prescribe meds as well, so we can uh -huh. attend to that growing need in the area. We have individual therapists who can do individual therapy and couples uh, therapy. And then we have the outpatient group programs for adolescents and adults. And we address various um, mental illness uh, issues as well as substance abuse. All right, awesome. Well, let's. Uh maybe talk more about that in a little bit, but let's tell, tell me about like what your background is, because I know you've worked in a bunch of different settings, so tell me a little bit more about your background. Okay, um, <clears throat> well, I am currently the um, clinical supervisor. Okay, so you are um, the person in charge. I, I manage the outpatient programs. Awesome. Okay. Um, so that means I supervise the therapist. Mm -hmm. I oversee their casework. I attend to the staff's needs. I, I view my primary uh, responsibility mm -hmm. is to do a really good job supporting the therapist. So they can so do a really good job. They can do a really good job taking care of our patients. Nice, nice. Uh, before this, I've worked for many years in the juvenile justice systems, okay. both at the state level and the county levels. Doing what kinds of things? Um, at, a, at the state level, I was the coordinator for substance abuse care um, for all of the adolescents at that facility. Okay. Um, at the county level, I was the uh, head clinician for um, all the kids who were at that facility. Okay, so <clears throat> with both of those, the focus was on, ju on juveniles. Juveniles, okay. correct. Right. Um, prior to that, I worked in uh, various uh, substance abuse programs at various levels. I've worked um, inpatient and outpatient and residential care and DUI okay. groups and I've worked with adults and adolescents. Um, I worked at a women's program yeah. for a time uh, helping women who um, needed to regain custody of their children. Okay. Um, I've also taught graduate school briefly mm -hmm. and I've worked for many years in private practice as well. So you have a wealth of experience in terms of the counseling, social work, yes. behavioral health field? I often have two jobs going at the same time uh -huh. because um, I really like the role of teaching and mentoring clinicians, uh -huh. but I also love the art and science of doing therapy. Mm -hmm. So you, you still have that combination of doing that, like you say, administrative, supportive teaching role, but at the same time working directly with clients. With Nice, nice. So, um, in your work with the juvenile justice and at the county and state level, um, was the focus primarily on the substance 
use piece of it? At the state level facility that I worked at, that was my role. I was the substance use coordinator. Okay. So there was a lot of uh, substance uh, risk education, um, but for kids who had uh, more severe um, abuse and addiction issues, there was more intense treatment. Okay. And, and what would you say percentage-wise for the kids that were in that facility, did a majority of them have some kind of substance use uh, issue or problem or? Well, you know, um, this was many years ago, but even then, um, I can probably count on my fingers how many kids that would come in over those years who hadn't at least experimented. Mm -hmm. And a very significant number of them were way past experimenting, yes, and it was um, an everyday activity. Um, and for a lot of those kids, they were indeed addicted. Mm -hmm. So then there's definitely some management issues of them being in that facility and having to address those yes. withdrawal, addiction, dependence issues. Yes. So what kinds of things would you do with them? Well, we had um, a staff of clinicians there as well. Mm -hmm. And depending on each kid's needs, we would um, come up with a, you know, a method or a plan, a treatment plan mm -hmm. for addressing what they needed. We had a psychiatrist on staff mm -hmm. um, and a doctor and nurses and they could um, manage any medical needs in addition mm -hmm. to the psychological recovery. Mm -hmm. Was there any particular substance or really was it a range of substance? It was a range of substances that kids yeah. were using. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So that's a whole host of issues in addition to the sort of uh, criminal aspect of, of what was going on for them and probably uh, uh, other things that were going on as well. A lot of things in those kids' lives brought them, you know, to our attention. Um, and for a lot of kids, their substance use was a part of their criminal activity and selling. Mm -hmm. um, so... Uh, it was a myriad of micro and macro and meso issues that uh, those kids were dealing with. Mm -hmm. So how did you transition from that to the more hospital-based uh, behavioral health field? Well, um, the transition was one that I really didn't direct myself. Mm -hmm. um, the county level facility that I was working at closed. Oh. Um, so I uh, did private practice only for some little while and I decided that really wasn't quite enough. Uh -huh. As I said, I like um, to do a little bit more. So um, I looked around and got the opportunity at Elmhurst. Okay. And shortly after I started working there, Elmhurst Memorial Hospital merged with Edward Hospital and we right. are now EE Health. Right. Healthy Driven. Uh -huh. um, and Linden Oaks has merged all of our mental health care. Great. So now you're a part of that Linden Oaks system. I'm in a big family now. Right. Yes, you are. So um, chemical dependency treatment is obviously a really strong background piece that you have, mm -hmm. the substance use um, treatment. Um, and so um, I know that that's kind of a, a definitely um, additional training and some unique aspects of treatment for, for substance use. Um, so I'm thinking maybe when we get back from our break that we talk a little bit more about the chemical dependency treatment, substance use tr uh, treatment, and um, how that kind of, what, what kind of treatment is provided at Hinsdale, um, what that looks like on an outpatient basis. So, okay. so when we get back, we'll we'll chat with Faye about um, we'll pick her brain about substance use treatment, chemical dependency treatment, and specifically what happens at Hinsdale. So, so join us when we get back from break. Mom, can we get some ice cream? Please, Mom, please. No, we're having dinner yeah. soon. Please. You don't have to be perfect to be a perfect parent. There are thousands of children in foster care who will take you just as you are. Now, come, come on, on, Mom. Come on. Come on. Right. I know, 
two seconds. Hang on, just stand still. Stand still, love. One second. I know. Just go. Go, go, go. You don't have to be perfect to be a perfect parent. There are thousands of children in foster care who will take you just as you are. Welcome back to Mental Health First Aid. I'm Denise Ellsbury, and we've been talking with Faye Jackson, who works at our Hinsdale office for Linden Oaks Behavioral Health. Um, right before the break, we were just getting into talking about substance use treatment. So give us kind of the big picture of what does substance use treatment look like and maybe kind of the different levels of care. Okay, um, for some people, um, they first might require detox okay. uh, services, and that would be in a situation where their substance use um, is to a level that uh, requires medical management to um, safely manage the withdrawal process. Okay, so that means staying overnight in, in yeah. a facility. Yes, that would be a <clears throat> typically three or four day process. Okay. Um, we don't have that level of care at the Hinsdale location. We have a detox unit in the Naperville Linden Oaks location. Okay. And once the patient has been safely detoxed, they would then step down to the next level of care. For some people, that would mean a residential stay. And how do they determine needing residential stay as opposed to well, not? There are ASAM criteria. Ooh, which directs, fancy term. <laughs> which directs um, the levels of care that would be most appropriate. Okay. Um, so again, the person's history, use history would determine that. Um, and a residential stay would be at our Northwest Community Hospital uh, location up in Arlington Heights. And so detox is, like you said, three to four day to really just kind of manage the withdrawal symptoms. Right. And then residential, is there a time frame for residential stay? Residential is uh, frequently two weeks to uh, 28 days. Okay. Um, and that is to really um, help the patient form new habits without use of their substance. Okay. It's a difficult process for some. Mm -hmm. And then from residential, they would step down to an outpatient level of care, which is what we have at the Hinsdale location. Okay. And I'm imagining there's different levels of the outpatient care. Well, as there well. are in some locations. Um, in the Naperville location, they have an all day um, outpatient level for substance uh, recovery, and that's called the partial hospitalization program. At the Hinsdale location, we have the intensive outpatient level. Okay. And that is um, a three hour per day, uh, four days a week uh, treatment program. Uh, that's in the evening at the Hinsdale location. So the majority of our patients work during the day. Okay. And then come to their treatment after work for three hours in the evening, Monday through Thursday. All right. So that it, in a sense you're trying to get people back to, or maybe the least amount of disruption to sort of Exactly. their everyday life kind of exactly. a thing and knowing that people most people can't take 28 days and go to a residential facility kind of thing. Well fortunately um, a lot of um, employers do allow folks to take um, the federal medical leave of oh, absence nice. from their work so that they can get the care they need mm -hmm. and then um, as soon as we can we get them right back to work and back into their lives and, and provide the support for that process. So at Hinsdale, you offer the intensive outpatient, which you said is like three hours a day, Monday through Thursday in the evenings. And, and what kind of things do you address or what is the, the focus of treatment there? There's a great deal of education um, that we provide to patients. Mm -hmm. um, education about um, the real physical, mental, and emotional effects of their use, mm -hmm. um, the effects on their relationships, etc., and just a lot of um, skills building, how to cope in alternative ways where they may have been using uh, their substance as their primary coping tool. Mm -hmm. We're asking them to substitute now for okay. more healthy methods of coping with reality in their lives. Okay, so it, 
so as an example, I feel frustrated about something that hasn't gone the way that I wanted it to go, and in the past I might have used, had a drink, whatever that is, Exactly. Some other skills that you might help develop would be... So if you quickly, um, in the past, your pattern would be when you're angry or sad or feeling lonely, you use your substance. You haven't learned the skills of how to cope with negative feelings and distress mm -hmm. in other ways. So we encourage people to develop new habits, build skills. We teach a lot about communication skills okay. so that they are more able to have effective relationships and say what they think and feel and need. Mm -hmm. um, we teach people healthier uh, routines of good self-care, exercise, diet, um, just being happy and content in your own skin. Mm -hmm. Many skills. Mm -hmm. One of the things I uh, in mental health first aid that we talk about is encouraging those self-help and other support strategies and I've just been really uh, mindful of how important that piece is right that absolutely. treatment absolutely is is important but maintaining wellness means really developing those skills like you're talking about the clinicians have a role mm -hmm. to teach to support to guide to um, bolster in any way that we possibly can positive uh, routines and habits and self-talk and so forth but the real hard work is done by the patient themselves mm -hmm. um, there won't be any success for all of our effort if the patient doesn't um, internalize what we're trying to accomplish with them and they have to pick up the ball and run with it mm -hmm. and it and it strikes me that when in the Hinsdale office then when you're seeing them in the evenings they're probably coming to the program having been at work and having to address some of the oh things didn't go the way I wanted exactly it to right. today at yep. work or I felt really frustrated about my interaction with this person or exactly and they come to a place where they can process all of those things very openly they become very um, much involved in their in their groups um, because it's the people in the room that um, are there to listen, to help, to give feedback, to support. Uh -huh. um, it's a very um, precious process actually to watch uh -huh. as a group becomes a cohesive support to each other. And are people kind of coming in and out of the group? So yes. you have new members joining all the time, people that have been there for a while, and then people that have finished up their, their yes. program. We call that an open ended group, yes, okay. where um, folks come and go as opposed to they all come in at the same day and they all leave at the same day. Mm -hmm. um, we also have AA speakers come in weekly um, and the patients while they're with us are also attending their own support groups um, through the week as well. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So that can be a very intensive process then for people. It, it is quite a bit. It is quite a bit. Um, and we, you know, as they build those routines of accessing positive supports, um, we can then start to back out of their lives uh -huh. and they can use those supports that they've set up. All right. And is that um, just adults or do you have treat, uh, substance use treatment programs for adolescents yeah. as well? We do. We have uh, the same level of care at Hinsdale, the intensive outpatient program for adolescents and that meets after school. Okay, awesome. So, um, when we come back, let's just talk about in general what some of those other programs are at Hinsdale because the substance use is one piece of it, but I know you offer other programs as well. So when we get back, let, we'll hear about the other programs that are offered at the Hinsdale office. Now, come, come on, on. Come, on. Oh, come on. I know, two seconds, hang on, just stand still. Stand still, love. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. One second. I know. Just, just You don't have to be perfect to be a perfect parent. There are thousands of children in foster care who will take you just as you are. Wow, these are really good. You act surprised.
practice makes perfect. You don't have to be perfect to be a perfect parent. There are thousands of teens in foster care who don't need perfection. They need you. Welcome back once again to Mental Health First Aid. We've been talking with Faye Jackson about the different services that are offered at the Hinsdale office for Linden Oaks Behavioral Health. We heard a lot about the substance use programs that you offer there, um, but I know you offer a number of other programs for both adolescents and adults. So tell us about the other services that are there at Hinsdale. Okay. Um, we have, um, as I said earlier, we have uh, medication and psychiatry. Okay. Um, and we have the individual therapists. All right. As well. But we then have uh, the group outpatient programs for both adults and adolescents. And just like you were saying with the substance use piece, that there's different levels of care, there are also different levels of care for the other kinds of um, treatment programs as well, correct? Exactly, okay. exactly. At the Hinsdale location, we have um, the, again, partial hospitalization, which is the all-day program. It okay. meets uh, five hours a day, five days a week. Okay. So it's an alternative to an inpatient stay, okay. where a patient can be with us all day, but they can sleep at home and be with their families on the weekends. All right. And, and what determines that level of care? I mean, how do you decide that that's what somebody needs? Well, at that level of care, we're looking for um, medication stabilization okay. and to get a certain level of skill sets in place. Um, to help a patient cope. So if a patient is just um, not managing themselves in their everyday life, mm -hmm. um, they really um, have reached a very low level of function, mm -hmm. we would likely start at that level of care. Okay. If it's beyond even that level of care, they would start at an inpatient stay. So if, for instance, they may be really having some suicidal thoughts or exactly. active thoughts about hurting themselves, harming themselves yes. in some way, then they would go inpatient. Very likely, okay. very likely. Um, and at that level, at the inpatient level, again, it would be um, the effort to stabilize with some medications, okay. get them um, to a level where they can participate um, at an outpatient level okay. safely. And then uh, the all-day partial hospitalization program would typically be two to three weeks. Okay. And from that level, a patient would step down to the intensive outpatient level, okay. which is um, a half-day program, okay. five days a week. And so, for instance, kids, adolescents that are in that half-day program, do they like spend half the day with you and then try to go half the day back to their school environment? Exactly right. Um, for a lot of the adolescents, um, the school environment is one of the major stress stressors. Sure. Um, so if they start at the PHP level, mm -hmm. and then that's the five hours. That's the five hours mm -hmm. all day, mm -hmm. and then step down to the IOP level, the intensive outpatient level, which is a half a day. Mm -hmm. um, when they leave us, they go to school for the afternoon, and we watch the progress of that reintegration. <clears throat> we have um, a school liaison oh, nice. who advocates for the child in transitioning back to school. If special um, <clears throat> help is needed for certain classes or homework or even social kinds of problems, that um, liaison can advocate for those helps mm -hmm. at the school. Mm -hmm. And then we watch the progress of that child as they integrate themselves back at the school level. And then, again, we can back out and return them full day to school. And then once they're done with any kind of even um, intensive outpatient, they might then continue with some kind of weekly counseling support or family counseling support kind of thing. Exactly. All patients, um, when they leave the program, they will have um, referral and or appointments for medication management as well as therapy. Okay. Um, in the Linden Oaks family, we have many clinicians, and sometimes we will refer patients to those clinicians, but um, depending on needs mm -hmm. and availability, sometimes we will refer patients to other providers in the community. Okay. Many of our patients um, have established relationships before they come to us, and so we will re refer them back to those providers unless the patient asks for a change. Mm -hmm. So there really is this opportunity to kind of 
step up in intensity as needed, but also step down so it's not an all or nothing kind of exactly. treatment. Exactly. Nice. While the patient is with us, um, all patients are going to be um, assessed and evaluated by a psychiatrist mm -hmm. or an advanced practice nurse who is also licensed to prescribe meds. Okay. And the effectiveness of those medications is going to be monitored and discussed throughout their program, throughout their care. Um, meds may be prescribed um, to help balance neurofunction and neurochemistry. But we also want to um, get a good skill set going, as I said earlier, mm -hmm. um, to help patients as they return to their regular routines um, positively cope mm -hmm. with their life and stressors mm -hmm. and get back to their former positive level of function. So are there any differences in what the treatment looks like between adolescents and adults? Or is kind of the framework the same, just obviously people come with like you say, different stressors or, mm -hmm. or expectations on them kind of thing? The framework is much the same in that we want, again, stabilization, um, possibly with medication, and we want skill sets happening. That is the framework in both adult and adolescent, but of course how we do that is, is quite different mm -hmm. um, from room to room. Um, the kids who are with us all day also have an hour of school with us. Oh. We have teachers come in. Um, we have computers so that um, the kids can keep up with their schoolwork um, while they're with us. Nice. Um, they get some very uh, individualized help from the teachers. Uh, so if, if there needed. was something that they were struggling in, they might get yeah. a little added support with yes, that. Yes, exactly. Nice. So that when they return to school, we're, we're trying to not... Um, have mounting extra work and build up of undone assignments be an added stressor in the process of returning to school. Right, right. So um, just, you know, listening to you talk really kind of in all levels of, uh, of the treatment piece, um, you know, definitely that medication or the professional supports is one aspect of, of all treatment, but like you say, developing skills and coping strategies, support networks is an essential part of treatment. Absolutely. It's um, how do I get back to the reality of my life mm -hmm. um, with a good toolbox mm -hmm. so that the stressors that um, previously overwhelmed me, I can now address and respond to in a healthy, more productive way. Great and that I have a variety of tools or skills or whatever we want to look at to, to be able to exactly. uh, apply to those exactly. difficulties. And there are also many support groups in the community in addition to the psychiatrist or the therapist support. There's um, an organization called NAMI, okay. a fabulous organization, National Alliance of Mental, Ill, mm -hmm. Mental Illness. Um, and there is a fabulous facility in DuPage County, right in Wheaton. Mm -hmm. And they are a great resource for, for our patients and their families in educating and supporting the process of, of uh, healthy function. These um, organizations, also including AA, help a patient stay on track so they can maintain the gains that they made while they were with us. Excellent. Well, Faye, thank you so much for being with us today. It was great to hear about what's um, offered at Hinsdale. And real quick, tell us the phone number that people can call if they want more information or if they are in some kind of distress and need a level of care assessment. Thank you, Denise. We have a 24-7 uh, call in line. It's 630-305-5027. Call any time to access our services, but patients can also walk into any emergency department in any hospital and ask for linkage to Linden Oak Services. We'd really like to make accessing mental health care as easy as getting a dental appointment. Awesome. Thank you for being with us. Join us next time, and in the meantime, be well. Thank you, Denise. <laughs> oh. <laughs>